the world at the moment is calling us the GLP one generation. Okay, uh, celebrities world over, entrepreneurs, politicians, athletes like Serena Williams have endorsed it. You have had a very strong point of view that we should stay as far away from GLP one as possible. Clearly, India is not listening to you because it became the highest selling drug. So, what are we not understanding about GLP one? What is your specific sort of, you know, what what keeps you away from GLP one? Well, we had an opportunity to become part of this um, back in twenty twenty three when um, some of my known folks they started using GLP one because we train a lot of people and so we thought okay this is interesting and so we looked at it and then as I kept learning about them reading more about them. I figured that this could not be good because one of the <clears throat> see the problem with any medication which has a impact uh, which has a systemic impact in your entire body and it's not targeted are always dangerous and by this basically uh, I'll explain you what it means so in your body you have an endogenous hormone called GLP one um, which your body releases in response to uh, you know carbohydrates or um, you know your fat or protein intake. And that gives you the feeling of satiety. Now, this GLP-1, if it was only restricted to your intestines or let's say your pancreas or your abdomen, it wouldn't be a problem. The problem is this GLP-1 receptors, they are also expressed in different parts of your body. So your brain, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, all of these places, you have GLP-1 receptors. So when you are taking in any exogenous hormone, so in this case, you have GLP-1 RA or receptor agonist, when you take them, they are not just attaching themselves to GLP-1 receptors in your in your abdomen or your pancreas mm. or intestine. They are attaching themselves to every other place. Mm. And so these are ca- called off-tissue uh, side effects. And so that's why when you have host of problems which seem very counterintuitive. For example, there was a recent meta-analysis which came out in November mm. um, which said that uh, you know, GLP-1 receptors uh, agonist are linked to chronic cough. People must be thinking, what? How is that possible? Like, why would a weight loss drug be linked to chronic cough? But you then you read into the whole, uh, uh, you know, pharmacology of how these drugs work, and you realize that your lungs also have, um, you know, GLP-1 receptors. And so it's entirely possible. Hmm. Similarly, one of the worst things that happens is when you apply these drugs in the context of Indian population, which already has low muscle mass mm. and does not go to the gym, has very uh, bad affinity towards protein. These drugs are known to cause huge muscle loss. Most of the researchers that have shown showed 30 to 40 percent of lean muscle loss. That's a lot. And muscles are your biggest sink for glucose disposal without adequate muscle mass you are susceptible to all sorts of metabolic problems. And so if you blindly just make this drug available to all the Indians, and you know how regulation in India works, Hmm. uh, with no pharmacovigilance, no regulatory body, imagine the Indians start taking these drugs, less than 1% of Indians go to the gym. So these drugs are going to cause uh, not only muscle loss, but also because Indians don't go to the gym, they don't take protein, it is also going to increase the risk of frailty or uh, fractures, hmm. and which is also uh, a rising issue in many of the people who are like 50 and above in India. So I'm thinking, and, and we are not even covering the serious side effects, like for example, pancreatitis, uh, gastroparesis, you know, the, the thyroid cancer risk and all of those things. And uh, you know that uh, the Australian health body, hmm. they also flag these um, drugs for potential suicidal tendencies. Yeah. Right. So I'm saying that all the countries they are publishing different different regulations against these drugs, and putting up a proper pharmacovigilance framework and regulatory frameworks. Why isn't India doing that? Do we even have a single longitudinal study done in Indians for these drugs? Like, is it too much to ask for? Let's say getting a two year, three year longitudinal study done on Indians when you are when you are planning to give these drugs to millions of Indians, hmm. it's, that's how it works. I'm, I'm not even saying that, I mean, that's the law. If we tested the COVID vaccine in Indians, that was the law. We could not have the same AstraZeneca vaccine. We could not have the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We created our own vaccines. Hmm. 
that was the law. So how is that now the law has changed? Now we are importing these drugs and nobody's asking for a longitudinal study in India. So why do we have to become laborates to this experiment? But I don't see a lot of doctors uh, sound the same alarm. The doctors are sounding alarm when it comes to weight loss drugs on misuse, on saying that it's going to the wrong candidates, yeah. right? But they are not perhaps sounding the alarm so much on the long-term uh, impact of GLP-1. Why do you think they are not saying it? Yeah, because uh, uh, the milder versions of these drugs like uh, liraglutide and exenatide have been in circulation for a while and they've been used for doctors for quite some time. Now, uh, what they failed to recognize at the, the earlier versions of these drugs had a very small half-life period hmm. where the drug was in the body for a couple of hours or maybe a day. Hmm. So people used to take these drugs orally or uh, you know intravenously um, uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Hmm. And But those drugs were not that potent. Now, these drugs, they stay in the body for up to seven days, eight days. And the new version of the drugs will stay in the body for seven, uh, 15, and even 30 days. So the way a drug functions, like you cannot extend the same risk-benefit profile of a drug based, based on the earlier, milder versions of the same drug. Hmm. The doctors are doing that mistake. But They're, then... I, I get your point. A lot of this has been flagged earlier as well. Then why do you think the most informed people on the planet, athletes, yeah. for whom their body, their fitness is everything, yeah. who have a battery of people taking care of their nutrition, their muscle, um, you know, their muscle mass, their protein intake, they have a full-fledged professional team only to take care of yeah how they eat and how they feel. Why do you think Serena Williams has endorsed JLP one I mean, it's her company. Her husband's yeah, I mean, investment. Yeah, okay. I mean, huh. yeah. So people have to understand that there's various incentives, motives, and when athletes do get retired, um, they do undertake certain kinds of endorsements. And I'm not going to hold them accountable for that, but at least it's it's up to us because, you know, if Virat Kohli is going to sell whatever chips, it doesn't make him an expert on nutrition, you know. So, and similarly, you know, like uh, so many celebrities do so many endorsements, but that does not make them an expert on that subject. Hmm. And neither does their endorsement uh, mean that that's actually the right thing for somebody to do. Hmm. So, Serena Williams is just one of the cases where she has a huge conflict of interest here. It's her company, and the 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 company's name is Roe, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so she is a board member. Hmm. And so, yeah, of course, I mean, you have to put skin in the game and you have to show people that I'm taking it and that just opens up the gauge for everybody. See, one of the things that people have to realize that you should never trust American products and brands because they are really good at marketing. And uh, I think you'd do a mistake if you follow the same playbook as America. There are much better countries to learn from. Hmm. There are much better countries that actually take care of their people and not driven by extreme capitalism than America. Like Europe? I'd say Japan. I'd say some parts of Europe, yes. I'd say even China. Hmm. But I would not say US. US is probably the worst example hmm. of, a, of a nation that any nation should follow. Like, you know, there's this series called The Boys. Hmm. And there's a, there's a character called The Homelander. Hmm. That's actually the US. <laughs> They're not Superman. They're the Homelander. Hmm.